Okay, starter deck 19 Fable Waltz here with Schumann and Syndromon. Let's check this out. See what we got here for this opening for today. And yeah, fantastic products, fantastic decks for new players to get started. And here in the back, we basically get like a paper play mat. Uh, which basically explains some of the basic rules, how to play and all that. Talking a lot about Blastage evolving. And here is basically the playmat with Schumann and Syndromon right here. But of course, we won't be using it because we're going to be using our own Battle Vault Cyber Zone playmat. Which you guys can get on the Vault store if you haven't done so yet. Really appreciate the support. But yeah, that's basically it. Paper box, paper deck, and this is what we're really looking after. So, we have... The Digi Egg, Caramon, which of course we have to have four copies of these for sure, which gives you draw power when attacking once per turn if you have another Digimon on your side. Then we have Junkmon, which is a decoy specifically for puppet trait. So decoy is a mechanic that basically when your opponent's effects would delete any of your other Digimon, you get to delete this guy instead to prevent the deletion, kind of giving it like kind of protection. We're going to see that quite a lot in this particular deck as well. Barrier, really good. It's kind of like jamming, but for yellow. So, but also protects by battle. So if your Digimon would ever get delete by battle, essentially, you just need to trash your own security. And you protect it. So, yeah, pretty good protections over here. Shumon, the main star of the deck, which is the main rookie. This is the on play, letting you search, revealing top three, adding one puppet tray and one card with Liberator among them. And then you return to the rest of the bottom. So, really good. You can effectively get two hits very consistently with this card. And with its inheritable, all turns, uh, not all turns, your turn, all of your opponent's security Digimon gets minus 3000 DP, which is going to be pretty important because we're going to see that quite a lot in this deck as well, I believe, in this whole archetype. Anyways, Pawn Chasmon right here here on play trash one draw two specifically for the puppet trait reboot with inheritable letting you unsuspend during your opponent's unsuspend phase as well i like how they decide to sort of like add back the full explanation of each card in these starter decks because it's really important to have these keywords actually explained because like in some future sets or in depending on which set it is more advanced sets i guess they just don't include the the explanation of what these cards do so it's again really really important and really good on them to be thoughtful uh into including these explanations still anyways blocker on deletion you get to trash one to draw two kind of like the other pawn chest mon there's like two different types but this one costs one to evo and we got doggy mon right here which has on play and on deletion give one of your opponents digimon security minus one meaning that they will do one less damage to your security if they try to attack into it Toba Catmon right here with jamming, which is kind of interesting because normally this is like a blue keyword, but like I mentioned earlier, basically it just can't be deleted by any security Digimon and barrier as well with inheritable. Really useful for the deck. And here it looks like we're going to get into our super rare, which we have Shushumon, starter deck 19, security effect. We got two of them. I think they kind of stuck together. Yeah, so we get two copies of this card. Security letting you play a libera Liberator trait card costs four costs or less from your hand or trash for free, essentially. Overclock, which is the main key mechanic keyword for this particular archetype in this deck right here. And what overclock puppet trait means that at the end of your turn, you get to delete one of your tokens or other puppet trait Digimon. And then this Digimon can attack a player without unsus without suspending. Meaning that if your Digimon was unsuspended, you can just attack without suspending it. Or if it was suspended to begin with, you can also just attack again with its inheritable as well. All turns, your opponent's security Digimon gets minus 3000 DP. So yeah, we got two of these as the main SR of the deck. We got Pandamon for copies, Blocker on Leashin. We have X Tyrannomon. This one's actually kind of interesting because this is quite a lot of like advanced keywords already. First, you have the alternative Digivolution cost, which meaning that you can Digivolve on top of a level 4 Tyrannomon or Raremon in name for 3 costs instead of 4. Uh, and these basically kind of play around even the color requirements for this specifically black box text. It's called alternative Digivolution condition or requirement. I can't remember exactly that last word, but anyways, Armor Purge. Great, fantastic floating capability, so if you ever would get deleted, you can just trash the top card, which is this guy instead, and protect everything else in the bottom whenever it get deleted. Digicross is a mechanic which basically lets you reduce the play cost of this guy. So aside from just digivolving for 4 costs, you can always just hard play this guy for 7 costs, but if you digicross by tucking in underneath a level 4 Tyrannomon 
or rare mon in name, plus one level four puppet trait, you can essentially make it reduce cost by two because it says Digicross minus two for each source you place under. So if you do put two of them, you reduce it by four cost, making it a three cost hard player level five, which is really cool. But the thing is, there's no Tyranomon or Raremon in this deck. So that's a little bit interesting how they kind of designed this. Uh, otherwise, at least you can basically, you know, play it for five costs in this deck if you were playing with all these cards by itself. But yeah, pretty interesting. And then Barrier with it inheritable as well. Then we got Chaperomon or Chaperomon. Again, can't pronounce this card. Don't know how to, but let me know in the comments. But on play or when did you evolve? One of your opponents is you might guess 3000 DP. Uh, minus 3000 DP. If there's three or more, you further reduce it by another 3k. And then Inheritable is actually really, really good for this deck because all turns when this Digimon will leave the battle area, other than by your own effects, you get to delete one of your tokens, other, uh, one other tokens or puppet trait Digimon, and it just doesn't leave. It just protects it and prevents it, which is really, really, really good uh, protection for the deck. Okay, now we're moving into our uh, main boss Digimon of the deck, the boss card itself, boss monster, where we have Sendromon. And yeah, we only get two copies of Chaperomon right here. So with Sendromon, it has Overclock, which we talked about earlier. It has Blocker itself, which is kind of neat. Three costs just to Digivolve, 11,000 DP as well. And then when Digivolving, you get to play two familiar tokens. They're yellow, they're 3,000 DP, and they have Unbleashing. One of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 3,000 DP for the turn. So a lot of synergy, because you guys can immediately see that it's going to supposed to synergize with Overclock, because you're going to delete your own token, you get to minus something that your opponent has on the board, and attack your opponent right away with it as well. Aside from that, you can synergize with your protection effects, just like this Chaperomon, which we saw earlier. You can delete your own tokens to protect your Sendromon, which is really, really good. So yeah, we got two copies of these as well and then we got Shin Monze Mon which is the alternative uh, level 6 of the deck again with the uh, Digivolution condition here with level 5 Monze Mon or Nume Mon in name but we don't play any Monze Mon or Nume Mon in this deck I believe does Pandemon count yeah no none of these count I think so you're going to be Digivolving for 4 in the most part but yeah if you play in a Monze Nume deck that's how it goes. You can digivolve for three instead of four. You can choose between, by the way. Armor Purge, which we saw earlier. On play as well, you get to place one level five or lower card with new Maimon or Puppet Trait in your trash underneath the sources to recover one. Okay. Pretty interesting. It's also when digivolving, not just on play as well. And then we're moving into our Tamer where we have Risa, which is the memory setter. Ensuring that we start our turn at three memory is just really, really good and enables more plays. But with her secondary effect is that when you play a token or a puppet trait Digimon, you get to suspend her and that Digimon gains rush. So you can attack immediately as soon as they're played. So you got four of these, which is good. And a Noble Family Arts, which is the main removal, I suppose, of the deck, which uh, when your opponent's Digimon gets minus 6,000 DP to return. If there's three or more, you further minus 6,000 DP. So you flood the board a lot with your tokens. You're essentially going to have three Digimon. As long as you have a Digimon plus a token and your opponent has a Digimon, which you intend to when you use this card. Anyways, you basically minus 12K for five costs is pretty efficient overall. So four of those, which is great. And then we have Yellow Memory Boost. Fantastic alt art. Looks really clean and nice, but if the only thing I like I mentioned in the other video of uh, Savagamon and Guardian Vortex is only if this was hollow and textured. Imagine if it was that, it would just be so, so sick. So that's kind of what I thought initially, but now we get into the training reprint cards, and these Altar cards are completely different to the one that you get in Star Deck 18 Guardian Vortex. Well, you get the exact same card itself that does the same thing, but the difference is they're different artworks drawn drawn by different illustrators. So that's a really cool thing. So it kind of entices you to try to get both decks if you want to collect these if you ever want to. But offense training right here for red. Mental training for blue where we can see Gaumon. And then physical training, which this deck is definitely going to need if you're going to be planning on playing it. Agility training for Terramon and green. And then there's defense training for black. This one's kind of hard to tell. That is a black card, aside from looking at the color bar right here, but even though it's a little bit translucent, so you can kind of see a bit of color like dark green underneath it, but just so you guys know, defense training is specifically for black, and then we have wisdom training to end it off here where, yeah, you can see the purple a lot more clearer, and then basically a bunch of other key cards here to help you learn the game. And yeah, let's go ahead and show you guys the budget build. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the budget build itself. As always, I recommend getting two copies of the starter deck to ensure that you get everything you need with convenience. It ensures you to get four copies of each Shumon, Shushumon, Chaperomon, and Sendromon, which are really important core pieces of the entire deck, especially when it comes to building towards your optimal stack. 
Mac. With the Digi8 cards, you're usually allowed to run anywhere between zero to five Digi8 cards in a deck. However, we only have the four Kiaromans to work with, so that's what we're gonna stick with. For rookies, I suggest not running any less than 12 in this particular deck because you often enough might pop some of them for your overclocked abilities. And I decided to actually go all the way up to 14 just because alongside with the Shumon, Junkmon is fantastic with its barrier. And I also played the two different kinds of pawn chessmon just because draw power is so crucial to help you ensure you find the pieces as you need. For level fours, you can normally run anywhere between nine to 11 and I settled for 10. Aside from the Shu Shumons of four copies, four copies of Tobu Catmon is also needed just for the barrier and hurtable, but itself also has jamming, which is great for early damage that you want to deal against your opponents. And then the last one, we got Doggymon, which is great to sort of slow down your opponent's attacks against you. For level fives, you can run anywhere between seven to nine, depending on your play style. I decided to settle with eight with four Chaperomons, two ex Tyrannomons, and two Pandamons. For level sixes, you can run anywhere between four to eight Digimon cards. And I settled with four Sendromons and three Shin Monzaemons as my secondary boss. Sendromon is your main aggression tool to help you make additional attacks. It also has blocker itself, so it's really good for defense. As for Shin Monzaemon, it can provide some floating capabilities thanks to Armor Purge, as well as its own recovery plus one to ensure that your security is healthy during the game. For Tamers, there's Arisa, which is the main memory setter of the deck to ensure that you start your turn at three memory to enable you to play as many cards as possible. Her secondary effect gives your puppet traits and tokens rush so that you can go for aggressive attacks. And this is why I recommend playing three copies of this card just to make sure that you see it often enough. But most importantly, you wanna save room to maximize the amount of yellow memory boost and physical training in this deck because it's really crucial as you're traditionally trying to build your stack Digivolve up to your level 3, 4, 5, and 6. Aside from consistency options, it's always nice to include some removal option cards with Noble Family Arts, which can help you deal with your opponent's Digimon to get rid of it, aside from using your own Digimon effects. And this wraps up for the budget build for the Fable Waltz starter deck. And if you guys feel like Sendromon is your type of Digimon and you want to take it to the next level, definitely stay tuned for the full power guide and build on the channel. So be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. And I appreciate the support from all of you. Alright, combos and how to play this particular deck. When it comes to your opening hand before you mulligan or as what you're trying to mulligan for, you want to be able to find your level 3s, your level 4s, your 5 and your 6 because the whole idea is to try to digivolve up your stack and then come out and then eventually basically start doing damage and start attacking down your opponent. Now if you don't see any of these cards, this is why it's really important to see a mixture and combination of yellow memory boost and physical training. Ideally you want to see 3s and 4s to start off so you can digivolve and guarantee that and then use the boost cards and the searching cards to help you find pieces. And this is where the Shuman really comes in. Normally you might think like, oh yeah, we're trying to digivolve up all the way to Shuman, Shushuman, Chaperomon, and Syndromon up the line to go for attack, which is definitely nice if you can ever get into it, but this is actually not the most optimal stack you're trying to build. Funny enough, the Shushuman, you actually want to prioritize it to hard play it to find your other puppet related traits Digimon. And whereas the Digimon that you sort of want to have in your stack is actually Junkmon with Barrier or any some sort of Barrier as you're Digivolving up, hence the reason why we also play Tobu Catmon as well. Now as you're Digivolving into Shushumon, eventually you want to just remain at the back and sort of sit there and set up your cards here as well so you can utilize them as additional resources. Shushumon as you push up and if you have access to Chaperomon, this is when you can just Digivolve and basically reduce your opponent's Digimon by DP by 3000 and another 3000 if there are three or more Digimon on the board, so you can potentially remove something which is really fantastic. And then the ideal one follow up is to go into Sendriomon. Now one of the key things with Sendriomon of nice thing was overclocked is that it actually lets you attack even though the memory gauge passes to your opponent's side and even at the end of the turn. So let's just say you are at zero and you pay three memory to go into Sendriomon. Afterwards, Sendriomon will let you play two out two tokens out on the board and you can immediately then at the end of the turn use overclock to attack by deleting one of your tokens you can dp reduce one of your opponent's digimon by 3000 and you can still go for the check and this is why it's really important to have barrier because if ever in any situation sendromon would be deleted by battle all you have to do is just trash the top card of your security stack to protect her and keep her in the game Aside from that, Chaperomon provides additional inheritable, aside from just, just like Barrier. It's like Barrier, but even better. If your opponent tries to remove Sendromon with effects, returning to hand, deleting, 
bottom decking and whatnot, this is when you want to keep your token on the board and delete the other token to basically keep it there and so that your Sandromon stays on the board. Aside from that, like I mentioned in the early stages, going into Tobio Catmon is fantastic for early chip damage. Just because of jamming, you can go ahead and swing your opponent's security and not worry about it being deleted. And then afterwards, you can follow up and continue to digivolve up your stack if you need to. These are the times when you want to utilize your yellow memory boost and your physical training delay effects to help you climb up fast so that you don't need to utilize as much memory and you don't pass turn. Aside sometimes when you don't see your Sendromon, there is the Shin Monzeimon as the secondary boss monster of the deck, which you can go into and you can aggressively attack with it because whenever it would potentially get deleted, all you have to do is armor purge to protect it and keep it on the field. Afterwards, then if you eventually find your Sendromon, you have a level five that you can work with immediately to go into it and start using overclock and attacking. Aside from that, with Arisa is when she plays out a token thanks to Sendromon's effect, you can even suspend Arisa to give them rush so that your tokens can actually attack into your opponent's security to deal even more damage. Very aggression based with this entire deck as you want to attack as much as possible so that you can pressure for game and basically win that way. Aside from Schumann, which I mentioned earlier, other cards that sort of help you find cards and pieces is also Pawn Chessmon. Aside from Digivolving inside the stack, you can also give your Sandromon reboot, so it makes it difficult for your opponents to attack over it. But aside, like I mentioned, you want to play this because you you get to trash a puppet trait Digimon card and then you get to draw two cards off of it which is also just as good as searching potentially two hits with Shumon. Now when it comes to all of this again like I mentioned you just want to keep going to Sendromon as soon as possible attack 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 and that's basically how you win with Fable Waltz. So be sure to share this video with a friend who's getting into the Digimon card game. Watch this video as well to learn the beginner's guide for starter deck Guardian Vortex. As always thank you so much for watching you guys have a great day great night wherever you are see you in the next video and this is about signing out